It's the beginning of September, which means one thing. It's time to start thinking about spooky season. Some friends of mine reached out telling me that they wanted to really up their Halloween presentation this year. So they're going to put out one of these 12 foot tall skeletons and want a beating heart in it and asked if that's something that I could help them come up with. And I have a 3D printer, so of course I said yes. So the first thing to do is figure out what filament I'm going to use. And I immediately thought of Amy's Blood of My Enemies by Protopasta. It's a gorgeous deep red that is a translucent high temperature PLA. I have always liked the filament, but I've never had a project that I could use it on. So this was a perfect opportunity. Now that I had the material, I had to find a model. And as usual, the internet provides. I did a search on printables and found this anatomical human heart, which was made from a cardiac CT scan. It's full size, so I figure that's roughly what I'm gonna need. There are a couple of considerations for the model that I need to wind up with. I want the heart to be hollow because my friend wants to put lights in it. So we're going to also need to be able to have the heart separated so that you can get into work on the lighting. It's going to need a hole to put the wiring through. We need some way to suspend it within the rib cage. And ideally there would be some sort of mechanism to make sure that the two halves don't slide around before they're tied off and hung inside the rib cage. So now that I have an STL to work with, I just need to start modifying it to fit my needs. And my first step was to go into Mesh Mixer. If you're not familiar with Mesh Mixer, it's an older utility that lets you directly manipulate STL files without converting them to another format. So here is the model in Mesh Mixer. It's got some discontinuities there, but we won't worry about that. So the first thing that I needed to do is resize this. I figured out that taking this model and blowing it up to 180% would be roughly the size that I need for the skeleton to match the scale, as well as being about as big as I can print on my 300 millimeter printer. So we go to edit and transform. I can say scale, since it's at one, We'll go to 1.8 and uniform scaling is turned on. That makes it big and we'll accept. So now we've got this big human heart. If I was to print this off now, the slicer would see it as a whole model. So I need a way to make it hollow. And luckily Mesh Mixer has a command called hollow. So if we select that, what it's done is gone through and hollowed out this model so that we only have the walls. And this is exactly what I need. So I exported this and then threw it into Fusion 360 to do the rest of the setup. So here in Fusion, First thing that I did was literally just import the mesh. You can see I've got that here and got my origin right there in the middle. And that's going to become important. So I did a mesh reduce just because this was such a detailed model that I needed to cut down on the number of faces and make it easier to manipulate. And I didn't lose any detail by reducing the mesh and it's going to be something that's printed at a large scale that's only going to be seen from a distance anyway, uh, because even if you're six feet tall, you're roughly coming to about waist height with the skeleton. After doing that, you can see we still have those odd areas here on the mesh. So I ran a repair and now those have been cleaned up 
the next step was to convert the mesh into an object that Fusion 360 can actually manipulate. So remember I said the origin is right in the middle of my heart here. The next thing that I did was split this object. So now I have a heart front and a heart back. And I can turn the front off. And you can see that this is indeed hollow inside, which is awesome. So now I needed to figure out how to add in the features so that I can hang this. And I had also decided that I wanted to put magnets on the inside to help hold the two halves together. So on that same plane that I used to cut the model, I did a sketch. So these sketches are identical. They're just a disc that goes through the wall of the model. There's a hole on the outside, which will be a through hole so that we can tie off the model. And then there's this other hole on the inside that is going to be a pocket so I can take a six by three magnet and put in to help align and hold everything together. So now that those have been sketched, I just needed to extrude them out. So what I did was extrude those circles out symmetrically with five millimeters on either side of the center point and didn't select those holes outside. So you can see those are through holes that'll let us tie those things together. The next thing I did was select those circles that I am going to use to make the pockets for the magnets. And I extruded them out in a cut operation, which you'll be able to see in a second. Because the next step was to take the same plane that I used to split the heart and split these bodies. You can see over here, there are now double the number of these. And if I turn these off, you can now see that we've got these pockets on the inside where I can put the magnets. And then the next step was I literally just combined these four features into the heart model itself. And then show you here, I did the same for the front. So this is a front view of the heart. And we have those matching features. So these through holes and these pockets will all line up. Turn on the back. So the magnet faces will be directly posed from each other and we can run the line through here to hang this. So that hits the majority of my design needs. The next thing was to go to the bottom and I created a circle there and then extruded that up to create a hole for the wiring to drop through. So now I am left with, turn off the front, two halves that have all the features that I need and they're ready to print. So I exported each of these halves as a separate STL and threw them into Orca Slicer. So each one of these is gonna be its own plate. As you can see, the front really fills up my 300. This is the first time I've ever wished that I had a 350 and we didn't have any available printers at the shop to be able to throw this on. But 
as I said, the 180% is going to be fine, I think. And <clears throat> if we go into preview, I have decided to use a brim because the walls are only a couple millimeters thick. I want more contact area to make sure that this doesn't leave the build plate. Um, and even though it's going to add to the print time, I am going to be using supports. I just don't want to take a chance on getting several hours into a print and finding that one of the overhangs is just too much to deal with. So there's the file ready to go. And I can show you I'm halfway done. So this is the back of the heart with my head for scale. It's literally as big as my head. Um, I've got the holes there. There are the features inside where I'll be putting the magnets in. I still have a little more cleanup to do with this. Um, there's a little bit of stringing. I, I didn't really try to tune this material. I just used my default PLA settings. Um, also printing PLA in a Dragon UHF is a little challenging. So the fact that I got it to print it all is kind of cool, but I'm going to print off the front half and finish doing the post-processing just to clean this up a little bit. So that's where I am so far. I'm going to cut things here because I still have to print the front half. Once I've got everything processed and ready to go, I will take it over to my friend so that he can do the installation and the wiring. And then I will hopefully be showing you the thing working inside the skeleton. So thanks for watching and I'll have part two as soon as I can.